The Bold Ones. E.G. Marshall. John Saxon. David Hartman, doctors expanding the horizons of the new medicine. Earl Ives. Joseph Campanella. James Parentino, lawyers defending justice in the nation's courtrooms. Leslie Nielsen. Harry Rhodes, public servants enforcing the laws of a challenging society. The Bold Ones. Hi, gang. Hi. Hi. Oh, you got me. Hi, you pretty thing. Hi, Mike. How are you feeling? Throat hurts. Throat hurts? Well, tonsils do that. We'll have you out of here soon. Hi, Jerry. Listen, when you get home, I want you to write on the blackboard ten times, I will not jump off the garage roof again. Hmm? Pretty solid leg you got. How's the hard head? Yeah, good. Is that the LA New York run? Hey, where'd he go? He's gone. But he'll be back. Hi, Jen Jen. You better call me Jennifer. Why? Because that's my name. Well, yesterday it was Jen Jen. That was before. Oh. Okay. Jennifer. Anyway, it's got more dignity. What are you doing? Hmm. Now that is very, very good. I think you're going to be an artist when you grow up. And a poet, and a doctor, and a school teacher, and a mommy. A mommy? Three girls. No boys? I don't like boys. Well, I don't think that's fair. Well, maybe one boy. That's better. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, I'll see you, gang. Bye. 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 Keep smiling. to 203, please. An orderly to 203. Yes, doctor? Jennifer needs another transfusion. No luck with the transplant at all? Mm-mm. I guess I could put up with leukemia a little better if it didn't hit kids. Yeah. Children's. <laughs> I'm convinced that the secret to this bone marrow transplant business is in your area. So am I, but we just haven't found the right key yet. Well, maybe there's some other kind of radiation we can use to prevent rejection. You know, I just got a report on some really potent types of radioisotopes. Let's take a look. Carl, there's a crack in this, uh... Oh, get away from there! Thank you. 
Chemical reaction. Come on, Ross. Oh, George, Al, sit up and get in there. Oh. Any, any idea what happened to you, Al, fine. How far from the chamber were you? An hour, ten, twelve feet. How large a dog did we get? I don't know. We'll have to check the out. You must have been pretty close. I was. How long did it take you to get out? I don't know. It's kind of grimy. How close were you to that shield? Five, six feet, maybe. Chief, the two ambulances to notify the hospital we're coming in. Right. There was happening. You've got some pieces of metal in you, Doctor. We've got to get you into surgery. This is a radioactive weapon. We'll be ready. There's been an accident. Nuclear Research Center. Get two ambulances over there immediately. How many injured? Two. One of them is Dr. Hunter. Get surgery ready to prep. And we'll need a sealed off wing. Yes, Doctor. Dr. Hunter will be one of the patients. Pass the word to the hospital staff to keep away from him. I don't want any well-wishers, understand? Yes, sir. Dr. Hunter is not only in danger, he's dangerous. fast as you can make it. Oh, you should not have said that. Absolutely. That's enough for you, partner? A man, the maniac on wheels. Well, you're a friend complaining, do you? Just keep your eyes on the road. You know, the trouble with you is you don't like to live dangerously. Mm -hmm. What's this? a decimeter to check the level of radiation. You mean that cat in the back is, uh... Yeah, that's right. All right. What's the matter? Don't you like to live dangerously? What are you grinning about? I don't know. The entire wing will be sealed off for the two patients. There will be someone there at all times to check all entrances and exits as well as the disposal of all waste materials. We don't know any of the details yet, so we shall take maximum precautions. Film badges will be worn at all times. Nurses in the operating room will work in teams. Now let's get started. Elizabeth? Yes, ma'am? Elizabeth, didn't you tell me you were pregnant? Well, yes, but I... We can't take any chances. Report to your department for assignment to another section. What's the latest from the research center? They can't pin it down yet. But they think Paul's got at least three or four hundred rads. Maybe more. Well, we'd better go on the assumption he's had severe bone marrow damage. I've ordered the transfusion equipment set up. I'll be ready. Look, Ted, you're going to have to share authority in your operating room. The health physics people will be there to monitor. As long as they keep out of the way. They'll try, but they have to monitor you, too.
Nurse, where's your truck room? Straight ahead. How do you feel? Kind of rocky. How's Carl? He'll be all right. How about a rundown on symptoms? Slight nausea, no shock that I'm aware of. I'm starting to get some pain from the fragments. We're starting you on antibiotics. Any change in the blood count yet? Yeah, you in charge of mine. Okay. How's it look? Do me a favor. What? Keep your trap shut and be a good patient. See you later. different from down here. All personnel will be rotated after receiving a dose of five rads. No ifs, ands, or buts. You the surgeon? Yes. You take 50, but that's your limit. There are three surgeons standing by scrub and ready and a half dozen of war nurses. Fine, we're ready any time. Morning, doctor. Shh, pay attention, we'll be a quiz later. Paul, I think we've located all of them. Let's go in. Doctor, they're hot. Get rid of them. I said get rid of them. I have a feeling you've been there before. You're not supposed to have any feeling at all. I didn't mean that kind of feeling. Did you come here to talk or to get this junk out of you? How much more? I don't know when the scanner stops registering. You out. Better hurry. Now, this is going to take time. You want another surgeon? No, I'm going in close to the kidney. What's wrong with my kidney? Nothing, baby. You've got a beautiful kidney. Then what are you going in there for? Well, we should have given you a total anesthetic and put you out. All of you, including your ears. A little over 50 minutes since exposure. If it was time alone that was critical, I wouldn't be so worried. 
When will we find out the amount of radiation absorbed? Well, they're working on it at the research center. They'll let me know as soon as they've got the figures. Ever had a case like this before? Exactly like this? No, I have had others just as bad, though. How did you make out? Well, no two cases are alike, you know. It depends on a lot of factors. I'll go see the other patient. Five cc xylokin. Nurse? Nurse, please. You've had it, Dr. 50 Rad. Your limit. Out. In a minute. You haven't got a minute. Ted, get out of here. So I'll have another problem. Doctor, I will take the responsibility. Then don't force us. Dr. Prillo. Ted, you were ordered out of here. I can't stop now, David. It's between the anterior surface of the kidney and the ureter. Doctor, get out of here. I've almost got it. Ted, Dr. Prello will take over. Oh, God. It's all yours, Joe. Suture? That was a damn fool thing to do. You better not get too close to me, David. I may be radioactive. finest young specialist lying on the operating table and the top man on my surgical staff needlessly exposing himself to excess radiation. You really expect him to behave any other way under the circumstances? I have the latest reports on Brandon. How is he? Nausea, vomiting, general weakness. Blood and platelet count appear to be dropping rapidly. What about the dose estimates? Brandon's dose is thought to be about 300 rads. Early hematological observation tends to confirm. That's pretty close to the critical level. I think he can handle it. What about Paul? He got more, didn't he? Substantially more. Julie. Have a nice sleep. Mm-hmm. Did you give me something? Just enough to make you drift off. Drift off my foot. It put me out like a light. Positive pressure room. That's right. Guaranteed to keep all those nasty germs out. You nurses certainly use technical language. We're used to taking care of civilians. How long have I been here? Right from surgery. How much has my blood count dropped? Anything I can do to make you more comfortable? Yes. You can drop the bedside manner and tell me how much my blood count has dropped. You know I can't answer questions like that. Julie, I'm a doctor. Right now, you're a patient. Mm. The look of an angel, the soul of a drill sergeant. Flattery will get you nowhere. 
Are those health physics men still around? No, sir. There's no more danger of contamination. How's Dr. Brannon? I'm not sure. I've only been working this side. This side? Of what? The wing. You two are privileged patients. You have the entire wing to yourselves. I see. Julie, would you try to get a hold of Dr. Craig, please? Tell him I'd like to see him. What's wrong? Nothing. You'll be able to see Dr. Craig through the window. And there's two-way communication. I thought you said all danger of contamination was gone. But the danger to me from outside infection is still very high. Meaning I don't have much inside me to fight infection. Now, do you want to tell me about my blood count? Come they let you in. I'm the surgeon. Oh, yeah. Let's see what we have here. Class, you will note that the specimen has two arms, two legs, one head, a sullen expression. Typical example of a male patient. I'd like to ask you a few questions, Professor. You are a member of this medical class? Mm, visiting physician. Sorry, the class is restricted to interns. They don't dare answer back. I seem to remember a hassle in the operating room. HP man ordered you out, and you wouldn't go. Well, boy, you know me, always showing off. Any after effects? There will be no questions. I don't mean me. I mean you. Nothing. Thick headed as ever. How am I? You're fine. You just ask too many questions, that's all. I want to see my charts. No, they're not complete yet. Oh, come on, Ted. Besides, I don't want you second-guessing me. Bad as that, huh? How many rads did I take? Paul, you just got out of surgery. We don't know anymore yet. That's the truth. I'll see you a little later. How is he? Slowly working himself up to the boiling point. I don't know how much longer we can dodge his questions. Well, he's behaving like your average nosy patient. He's curious. He's not the average patient, doctor. He knows what's going on as well as we do. Hello, Paul. Hello, David. Hi, Ed. How do you like having your own private nuclear guinea pig? That far, I wouldn't go. How are you feeling? Uh, no appetite, general weakness, nausea. All the normal symptoms of radiation illness. How big a dose did I get? Well, we don't know exactly. Obviously, it was quite a bit. Obviously. How much damage is done to the bone marrow? We still don't know yet. It's, uh... Can we cut out the kid games, please? Now, what's the blood count read? Now, come on, Paul. Getting all worked up is not going to help anything. Any more platitudes, Doctor? How about, uh, we're doing all we can, and, uh, we'll have you up and around in no time. That's a good one. I'm sorry, Paul, but... No. It's the other way around, Ed. I'm sorry, but you've got to start letting me in on things. David, how badly is the bone marrow damaged? Can I still produce enough red cells and platelets to keep me alive? You're going to need more transfusions, Paul. Total of pleasure? We don't know yet. There may be a recovery factor. But as of now, I'm not producing any worthwhile red or white corpuscles. Isn't that so? 
Yes, Paul. That's so. You know, it's funny. Remember how we used to talk about treating leukemia? The only good part about it was that it wasn't contagious. And here I am with the same symptoms. Now, theirs was chronic, Paul. Yours is externally and artificially induced. May make a difference. Well, I guess we'll soon find out. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen, it's been quite a day. This blood chem analysis verifies our earlier checks. The blood transfusions simply aren't doing that much good. And his temperature's flared up again. Doc, this is supposed to be realistic. This time it's tougher than usual to face the cold, hard facts. I know. Do you think any more anti-lymphocyte globulin would help? Frankly, no. Can I see the report? Ted, they've been checked and double-checked. Yes, I know. I just want to see it. Yes. We'll be right down. That was Paul's nurse. She thinks we better take a look at him. I don't know what's happened. Well, how long has he been this way? I called you right away. Paul. Paul. A typhus. Dr. Hunter is suffering a detachment, a disorientation. It's usually only temporary, but he'll have to be watched. See Dr. Craig right away. You should have rest, Doctor. 
You've been having a hard time. No, no. It's important. It's very important, Julie. Makes you wonder. The odds against an accident like that happening are astronomical. Then you add to it the fact that Paul had to be standing that close to it at the precise moment it happened. Yeah, then you get back to the question that crosses everybody's mind. Something happens to him. That great question. Why me? I'm afraid the answer to that is outside my province. Dr. Craig, they just called from the pressure room. Dr. Hunter would like to see you. Tell him we'll be right over. And in each case of an attempted bone marrow transplant with the kids, their own antibodies knocked it out, despite selective cell radiation or drug inhibition. What are you getting at? Not one of the patients has been exposed to as massive a dose of radiation as I have. Now, in my case, it's destroyed the bone marrow cells, but it also could have permanently destroyed the antibodies as well. That's what I went to see Carl Brandon about in the first place, to find out from him, to get his opinion on just what kind of radiation, how much radiation a patient could take without too much risk. As far as we know today, no patient could be given as much radiation as you've had. But I did get at it. The accident did happen. I'm a perfect guinea pig. Why not take advantage of it? Well, we were going to, but so far, transplants have only worked temporarily. I don't have to tell you that. That's just what I'm trying to say. Why not use me as an experiment? Try anything. Maybe you'll learn something you can use on somebody else someday. I think my blood type is AB. They're checking. Don't you even know your own blood type? It's the first thing they tell you in the service. I was never in the service. Yeah, well, the blood bank tracked me down. That's what I get for volunteering. Well, type AB is a very, very rare type. It's uh, not a lot of people have got it. Yeah. If I can be of help, I'm happy to do it. You guys here for Dr. Hunter? Yes, sir. Me too. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you came here to... What? He thought you were a hospital attendant. Oh, uh, well, I am, kind of. I mean, I drive the ambulance here. Oh, I did. Well, you thought I was going to take you somewhere, right? <laughs> nah, I'm just here to help, too, if I can. You know? I mean, I picked up the dude when he first got hurt. Over at the Atomic Center. Yeah, it was really Space Patrol, too. I mean, he lit up the whole ambulance. Yeah, I read where you uh, were all exposed to radiation. Yeah, a real jive. You know, I never made it across town so fast in my life, and I'm fast. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, well, I followed the whole scene in the newspapers, you know? I mean, it was like having the symptoms myself. <laughs> uh, James Webster? That's me. Yeah, you check out fine. Your blood matches Dr. Hunter's not only in type, but subtype. Far out. Take as much as you need. But we don't want your blood, we want your bone marrow. Bone marrow. Okay. Sure. Fine. I sweat. <laughs> you look as though they've got you wired for sound. <laughs> Twist the right one. I think you'll get Radio Free Europe. I'm sorry. We wanted to run all the tests. Oh, sure. don't be silly. Forget it, Ed. <laughs> I'm not that uncomfortable. Yeah, that's my donor. Nervous, but he'll be all right. How are you feeling, Jim? Okay. Good. What we're going to give you in a minute is going to put you all the way out. Okay. But listen to me now, because I want you to know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some holes in your hip and your rib bones, from which I'll extract the marrow to inject to Dr. Hunter. Okay. You'll feel nothing at all. It'll be very dramatic, but not painful. Fantastic. You ready? Okay. Everybody ready?
I pronounce the ring. Let me go with the donor. No problem. How many cells am I getting to? Boy, do I hate to treat doctors. Injection of bone marrow into the left antecubital vein. What's the amount? 100 cc. 100 cc's. What time is it? 8.07. 8.07 a.m. Sorry, Doctor. It's time for another sample. Oh, neat. What's the blood count today? Down again. Well, I've had less nausea, and I don't get so tired. But it went up. 24 hours after the transfusion, it started up. Yeah, but this is below 2,300. I think we blew it. Well, maybe. Nothing to stop us from trying it again. I can hold out as long as the donors do. I want you to know exactly what I'm going to do, Mike. I'll be making some small holes in your hip and your rib bones, and I'll withdraw the marrow, which will then be injected into Dr. Hunter. Carl. How are you? Recovering. I hear you've been having a rough time of it. Sort of. Paul. I'm sorry it happened. So am I. I've gone over it in my mind a thousand times. I just must have misread the dials. Couldn't it have been something else, Carl? It's the only thing that could explain it. And I don't know how I could have made such a mistake. We call that human fallibility. It's not a bad phrase. Reminds us we're all still members of the human race. Fancy dress suit? Not today. No need. The blood count. Up and rising and steady. <laughs> it seems it's worked. Son of a gun. You know, I always hoped that when I looked in the face of the great Grim Reaper, that I'd spit right in his eye. I gotta tell you something, fellow doctors. My mouth was too dry.
Uh, sit down. You don't have to stand up for us. Well, it's okay. I can stand up for you. Uh, listen, you sit down. I mean, we got a lot invested in you. We want you to take care of it. Okay. Come on. Sit. Sit. This is the first time I've seen you all together. We're having a meeting. Yeah, and the first order of business was to come over here and check up on you. How are you treating our bone marrow, Doc? Well, what you really mean is, how's it treating me? And the answer is just fine. That's fantastic. Really. I haven't had a chance to really thank you all. Oh, forget it. Sure, you made us heroes already. I did. Yeah, absolutely. We got written up in the old medical journal. Big deal, huh? And the paper. My wife bought 15 copies. Yeah, we're all sort of in it together. We sure are. And I want you to know if there's anything I can ever do for any of you, that's why we're here. We want you to join the Cosmic Club. The Bone Marrow Club, Doc. Once a year, we'll all get together and go someplace really far out to eat, huh? You're on. But the first one's on me. Too late. It's already been paid for. By whom? Dr. Craig. He said if he couldn't be a member of the club, at least he'd spring for the first dinner. Hey, listen, as uh, president of this association, I say we give the doc a rest, huh? Yeah. I am you as you are me, and we're all together. So take care of that bone marrow, huh? I will, Jimmy. Thank you. Yeah. See you, Doc. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Be cool. Thank you. Pumpkin Pooh, you're going to be just fine. All right. You know, I don't think I'm ever going to know what you look like. There he is. We'll see you tonight, honey. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Mrs. Stanton. Mr. Stanton, okay? Mm -hmm. We heard about your experience. Oh, I'm glad to see you looking so well. Could we speak to you privately? Certainly. We can go right out here. See you later. Bye. Now. Dr. Hunter, I know you're doing everything you can for Jennifer. But when we heard what happened to you and how you got through it. What my wife is trying to say, Doctor, is that Whatever it was that they used to cure you, couldn't you use for Jennifer? I'm afraid it's not that simple. But they said that you had leukemia. No, only the symptoms. They were caused by an accidental overexposure to strong radiation. But couldn't you do the same for Jennifer? No, sir, we couldn't. We couldn't deliberately expose anybody to a potentially lethal dose of radiation. Then you mean... Nothing was learned from what happened to you. We're working on it, Mrs. Stanton. We are learning. In fact, I'm sort of a walking laboratory. But I'd be misleading you if I said that anything positive had come out of it yet. We had hoped. And you should keep on hoping, Mr. Stanton. Jennifer has researchers all over the world working for her. Thank you. Daddy talking to you about? They uh, wanted to know if you were being a good little girl. What did you tell them? Well, I wouldn't want the other kids to hear this. But I told them that you were my very favorite girl in the whole hospital, including the nurses. Really? Cross my heart. I really mean that, Jenny. You better call me Jennifer. It's more dignity. Jennifer.